The Great Wall is one of the signature dive sites of the Cayman Islands. The lush coral reef system off Little Cayman's north side is part of a marine protected area inhabited by a splendid array of sea life. Diving along the top of the reef, we are in about 50 feet of water. About 100 feet from shore, a sheer wall plunges over 1,000 feet straight down. On the dive deck of Cayman Aggressor just above us, a 90-year-old living legend straps on his scuba gear, grabs a camera, and drops in right on top of it. We've come to the Caymans to join our dear old friend and mentor, Stan Waterman, for what he says will be his final dive trip after a career of over a half century of making films under the sea. The expedition will be aboard Cayman Aggressor 4, a posh liveaboard with which Waterman has a long history. He has hosted many a dive trip to distant corners of the planet with this fine fleet of luxury dive yachts. Given the significance of this journey, we are also joined by the Waynes. Hassan and Brown, the owners of Aggressor Fleet. Today is 6 April. Stan just turned 90 yesterday. Looking every bit the buccaneer, he arrives on the dinghy and welcomed by a coterie of old friends. It's a motley looking bunch of guests here. Who are these people? I know. <laughs> Our first dive the next day is on Randy's gazebo. This site gives up some nice shots and some quality time with a most accommodating hawk's bill. Spotting its reflection in the lens port, the turtle looks as though it's trying to get a new friend to come out and play. I spent nearly the entire dive with this little one and almost felt guilty as I turned to leave. Our next dives are at the meadow on Bloody Bay Wall. Wayne Hassan and I made the jump together, me with my Sony EX-1 and Equinox housing, and Wayne with his Canon 5D rigged for ultraviolet light. Acid rock from the 60s was going through my head all through this dive. A few days later on a dive site called Bus Stop, Wayne let me take his UV light and camera filter on a night dive. The coral reef already assumes a spectacular complexion at night, unveiling a parade of colors. But now, modern lighting technology allows us to see certain corals in, well, a different light. We use footage we shot here in a piece that is now on the ocean layer of Google Earth. Indeed, we were so enthralled that we produced a separate documentary on coral fluorescence called Secrets of the Psychedelic Reef. It was on a dive at bus stop that we first began noticing unusual behavior by some of the groupers. At the very least, some of them will sit and look at their reflections as long as you'll let them. Positioning themselves in the same tails-down attitude they exhibit at the cleaning station, they show us that they want to be friends. Just like Snickers, my cat back home, they will just sit there and take it as long as we feel like dishing it out. And, just like Snickers, they outlast me. Every time. I vowed right then and there never to eat one of these again. I just hope that I never make friends with any lobsters. On our next dive, a site called Nancy's Cup of Tea, we turn the camera toward a southern stingray and play Matador. When someone makes a dive on a new wreck for the first time, it's unusual to make it at night. This was a really fun introduction to this 356-foot Russian destroyer. Wayne Hassan tells us that he negotiated the purchase of this ship from Cuba and brought it to the Caymans. Appropriately, the vessel once known as Patrol Vessel 356 has become an artificial reef. 
She began life in the USSR and was part of the Soviet fleet stationed in Cuba during the Cold War. Her forward guns have sprouted new barrels in the form of sponges, which now give them the look of a comical muzzle blast. The bars blocking an entrance provoke visions of a forgotten gulag. The ultraviolet lights of Wayne Hassan's camera system cast an eerie pall over the ship, while Wayne Brown's lights bathe it in a more appropriate red. Groupers and other fish now patrol her decks and an unsteady slipper lobster shows us that maybe it's discovered a hidden stash of leftover vodka. Morning gives us a better overall look at the vessel. Although the storm is gone, the water still has the look of a dirty martini. We turn our attention toward interiors. One of the most intriguing locations is the engine room, now a spaghetti dish of wires, hoses, and cables. Mark Wainwright spent 22 years in the service of Her Majesty's Navy. Now a Cayman aggressor crewman, he leads me into the bridge. The few portholes that still have glass in them are now encrusted in corals. She rests in a bed of garden eels in about 40 to 90 feet of water, some 300 meters off Cayman Brack. The aggressor is visible above the radar array. It's still mostly intact, and photographers like it almost as much as they like the guns. As this trip commemorated a long, distinguished relationship between Stan Waterman and Aggressor Fleet, the owners and crew marked the occasion with a reception. Such notables as underwater photographer Kathy Church are in attendance. The evening is capped off with the Waynes presenting Stan with the very first Sea of Change Foundation Lifetime Explorer Award. A more fitting tribute I cannot imagine. The final dive is on perhaps the most famous wreck in Cayman waters. Kitty Wake now rests in 64 feet of water. As it's been for thousands of dives over a career spanning six decades, there's a camera in his hand. The hand is perhaps not so steady as it once was, the eye not so sharp. But to paraphrase Yoda, when 90 years old you become, look so good underwater, you will not. Toward the end of the dive, Wayne Hassan, Stan, and I meet at the propeller. Something catches Wayne's eye. A pair of spotted eagle rays passing by in formation, as though they're giving their old friend a final salute. A last hurrah. We make our way back to the line, perhaps for a last look at the undersea world with which he's had a lifelong love affair. And then, we surface. 
My thoughts go back 20 years to when Stan and I first met. It was after diving and shooting with him for the first time that I decided that come what may, I was going to be an underwater filmmaker. We had been diving together in the warm waters of Bonaire, the Solomon Islands and the Philippines, to the colder experience of filming the Great Whites of Guadalupe Island. And now, as that component of his career comes to an end, we dive together for the last time. As an ambassador to the sea, I know that he will continue to work as long and as hard as he can in the hopes that the human race will somehow become more thoughtful stewards of the oceans that keep us alive. The sea is giving us a wake-up call, and Stan and those who follow will always try to keep everyone's fingers off the snooze alarm. From the Caribbean Sea, aboard Cayman Aggressor, I'm Paul Cater Deaton, and I'll see you under the bubbles.